So we're going to grab both of these. I'll do one of them in red, one of them in blue. So that we can trash. Okay. Surprised to find so many people who said so they have trouble not taking the notes on this. Really, I want to be writing this down. Okay. Sure I got it. Not your mommy. So, please. Uh, all right. So now, as you go to grab this red one, let me just quickly remind you, uh, in case you kind of lost track of the whole wider set and slope or whatever, uh, it's important to remember why the wider set and slope even work. Okay. So this red equation, right? All we're doing by plotting the wider set in the graph is just taking advantage of the patterns that we find in this. This form of equation. Okay, one pattern is zero is super easy to plug in for x, right? Because if I plug in zero there, if I plug in zero for x, that goes away, and Johnny, what will y be? Um, I'll put in a zero right there. Negative seven. So why is just negative seven? Yes. Yep. Why is just negative seven when this is nothing? Me? Anyway. Yeah, I'm not really doing anything, and you're yelling it's together, at me. right here. I'm not yelling at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the other thing that's uh, easy and nice and uh, a pattern is what can we plug in for x? It's uh, not as easy as zero. Uh, two over three. I wouldn't want to put 2 over 3 in for x three. here. I would plug in 3. Oh. Right. Here, I'll do the calculations over here real quick. 2 thirds times 3 minus 7. That's easy because the 3 divides the 3. I'm just left with 2 minus 7. That's negative 5. Okay. So you'll notice I plugged in a 3 for x. That's, that's 3 to the right of 0 over 3. Right. And it's 2 up from negative five over three and up two. Okay, so negative seven. If I go over three and up two, I'll be right here at negative five. Right there. Now, draw my line, the red line. Hmm? We're gonna check this work. There's a line. Same. Now blue. Now a blue line. Okay. So if I if I don't do all this work and I just remember if I plug in a zero for x, I'm gonna get a six for y. Okay. I'm not talking. That was her. I wouldn't even hear what she now said. You take the opportunity to get all bent out of shape and talk a lot. Because you were looking at me, you're like, you're talking while I'm right here. And I'm literally not even paying attention to her. <laughs> now we have a slope. What's the slope of this line? The slope of this line is? Negative three halves, which means we go. Down three, one, two, three, and over two, one, two. There we go. Let's make this line blue. I think that's going to work. It's hard to tell. Ah. Well, Kenzie would just shut up and not talk to me. I wouldn't be like, oh, which I wonder who oh, is having kidding. more trouble not talking right now. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you got it wrong too with those lines. Huh? You got it wrong too with those lines. It doesn't match up. I'm very far away from the page. I know you can't see the dots, but it doesn't match up. Yeah, good. That check my work is right. <laughs> okay, well. I don't have any room. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very close to yours. Right there. Both of the slope, and this one should go down three numbers. You're saying like 
this. Yeah, they have dots that were it should, This blue one should go right through here, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Again, so seeing why graphing is not the best. For one, like I'm over here trying to get my graphs just right. Even though they're close, they're not exactly right. If I use the slopes, then I can find the exact result. Then what if the answer has like a fraction in it? Now we're really up to three. Okay. Can I try it? Um, you try what? Doing the lines like I did. It's not even redrawing them. They're already there. Six negative three. What are we going to do with six negative three? So negative three for y in this equation here equals two thirds times six. Check in our solution. Three divided six it gives us two. Two times two is four. Four minus seven negative three. The thing about graphing is it, it helped us. For one thing, it helped us to see this. When we started talking about solutions to systems, we said, yeah, maybe, OK, I'm going to split this table in half, and two of you are going to come back to your seats. OK? I can't see you. You're close over here. That makes no sense. Shelby's like, really around here. Then sit over here in the front seat. Shelby's like this. So what it did, what graphing helped us to see was that there's not going to be more than one solution. Okay? Because one way to see the solution is to, to realize that it's the, the intersection of these two graphs. If some equation makes a graph that you can see, and some other graph crosses that graph, wherever they cross, you know that's a solution that works for both. And we talked about how that works for uh, straight lines, which there can only be one place where two straight lines cross, unless they're the same line and they cross at every point, because they're just right on top of each other. You can have other graphs that are curvy, and, and another graph that's curvy, and cross several different times and have one, two, three, four solutions. So that's what the graph helps us to see. For straight lines, which we're dealing with, they're only ever going to cross once, zero times if they're parallel, 
and all the time if they're the same line. But when a solution might be a fraction or a decimal or something like that that the graph doesn't show very accurately, now we're, we have trouble. Again, you should have your notes. Be writing all of this new stuff down. It's all new. So we have these two equations, 4x minus 7y, 10, y equals x minus 7. Okay. Before I just say, here, do this, I'm going to explain why. So let's talk about what the solution will look like. We've said it several times, it'll look like this an x and a y that do what? Input and output. So both of the equations, right? For the functions, yeah. For both functions, this will be a valid input output combination for both of these, okay? And usually we'll just have one, sometimes we'll have none, sometimes we'll have infinite, but most times we'll find one. So, so this would be color code this and uh, make my point even more. Whatever y is the y of the solution, okay, that y is going to go here, should be able to go here, and here. So I'm talking about the y here. The y of the solution should be able to go here and here. In other words, this y and this y should be Okay, so this y needs to be the same as this y. Okay, let me throw out some uh, possibilities. If the solution turns out that the y is 5, then this should be 5 and? It should be 5. This should be 5, right? If this is, uh, this is 7, then this should be? 12, this should be 12. Do we all agree on that? Okay. All right, now I'm just going to drop some out. Now, Let's say I'm about to tell you what y is. Like the y in that solution, I'm about to tell you what it is, right? Whatever it is, I can plug it in there, and I should be able to plug it in there. I should be able to go there and there. So whatever I write here, are we all agreed that whatever I write here, I should be able to plug here, I should be able to plug here. Okay. Well, I do know something about y. I do know it is equal to x minus 7. We all just agreed that anything I put right here I should be able to take that, whether it was 5 or 7 or 12 or whatever, or x minus 7, and plug it in right there. How do I know y is equal to x minus 7? I just wrote the second equation again. So x minus 7 being equal to y, and these y's being the same, I should be able to just well, take that x plus 7 and put it right there. It'll look like this. same x and y, this equation gives me information about y. It says y should be equal to whatever your x is minus 7. And that information should be true in this equation as well. Only because we're looking specifically for that one combination of x and y that works in both of these equations. And if it works in this one, it should work in this one, and we can replace the y with x minus 7. So we've done that, and now that second equation has no y's, only x's. Can we solve for x there? So we can take that x minus 7 plug it in there. Now how do I solve this equation? Distribute. Distribute. Perfect. Can't resist the temptation to distribute. There's a negative 7 there. So we get negative 7x plus 49 equals 10. 4x minus 7x, negative 3x plus 49 equals 10. Subtract 49, negative, 3, negative 3x equals negative 39. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, x is equal to a positive Thirteen? Yes. Thirteen. Yes. Is 
other one, the other two, or no? Which other? These two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the X that, it, that should work here and here, right? The 13 should go there and there. And since 13 should be able to go in either one of those, I can take that 13, plug it in here, and that'll tell me what Y is. If Y is equal to X minus 7, I can take the X that I now have discovered, 13 minus 7 now, and Y equals 6. Negative 6? Yeah. 13 minus 7? Oh, never mind. 13 minus 7. Okay. So x is 13 and y is 6. And that's the solution. All right. That's called finding the solution using substitution. We have a pretty appropriate name for this method. And it was funny. Is it? Finding a solution. Yeah. It was rhyming. It was. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So we substituted this value in for y, because the other equation told us that's what y is equal to. Let's do another one. Oh, okay. You put it in a point slope form. I get you. It's just a little. No? No, it looks almost like this. Yeah, it does. It resembles it. But point slope form has a y and an x, even though it's that equation only has x and y. Like this? Do another one. Very similar. Uh, y equals 2x minus 1 and 2x plus y equals 3. We're doing some that are pretty cut and dry and then we'll do some that are not. Look at these two equations. One of them tells me that, like, it, it just tells me what I can substitute in to the other equation. Do you see it? What? Yeah. What would I substitute? Like, which? What would you? What would you substitute for what? What's that? The two. The two x. The two x. Yeah. That's zero. Remember that we're looking for an x and y, the same x and y. Yeah. Right? Anything that I plug, anything that this y is, whatever this y turns out to be, it's the same here and here, and here and here. Right? Whatever works here, works here, right? For that specific uh, combination. Okay? Not always. There's lots of combinations of y, like there's a y that goes there that doesn't go there, but we're looking for the one that does, that is the same for both. Same y goes here as here. These two should be exactly the same. Exactly the same. And since these two y's have to be exactly the same, and this y is equal to 2x minus 1, then this y should be equal to what? 2x minus 1. 2x plus, okay, now this y will be replaced with 2x minus 1 because it's the same as y. This is the same as y, there's y, and we just plug it in there, 2x minus 1 can replace y. And now we have an equation that only has x's in it, and we solve for x. So we have 4x minus 1 equals 3. Add 1 to both sides, divide by 4, and x is 1. What do we do next, y? Plug what in? X equals mm -hmm. one. Where? Just combine the X's. Combine the X's. What are we doing, mother? What do I put? Where do I plug in one for X? What? Where? Up there. Where? <laughs> Where? Where? Up there. <laughs> or X. Uh, here? If I have to get up, yes. yes. Just put it here and it, that's, it's done? No. <laughs> Why is it somewhere on the board? Yes, it's somewhere on the board. Okay, somewhere on the board. Where? Where do I put one for x? After the two. After the two. After this two? Yeah. Okay, so I take this equation and I plug in one for x. Oh my. And then, well, two times one is two minus one is one. We've got x is one and y is one. Hold on, one. 
X plus Y <laughs> is zero. Y, pay attention. Yeah. And X equals two Y plus six. Sure. All right. What's, what's the first thing you're gonna do, Y? No, well, you're gonna put two Y plus six for X. Where? For X. In, in which line. equation? In which equation? equation. In the top one. Equation. The first one, the top one. Okay, so we replace x, y, because x is the same as 2y plus 6. So well, we can replace this with 2y plus 6, because x and 2y plus 6 are exactly the same. 2y plus 6 plus y equals 0. 3y plus 6 equals 0. 2y plus y is 3y. This part? Yeah. Okay. So this equation tells us that x plus y is zero. This equation actually tells us exactly what x is. It is two y plus six. Let's so take this x out. Replace it with zero. Replace it not zero. Replace or it with two y plus six. Zero minus y. Yeah. How? Still confused. We don't need to get x by itself in this equation. I mean, if we could, it would, it would turn out to be the same. But well, I'm just trying to find a way that both equations can relate to each other. Okay. That's more for next section. Oh. Really? Yeah. Dude, okay, never mind. So take this whole thing, this whole thing, mm -hmm. and replace x with it, and that's exactly what we get here. We replace, we take the x out, we replace it with 2y plus 6. By I like terms and solve for y. Now that we know y is negative two, what do we do with that information? Put it in. Put it in. Y. For y. And you know. So x plus negative two. Okay. And you can put it there, which I would. Or you can put it there, Don't. it'll be exactly Don't. the same. <laughs> but right. it's a lot easier to put in that first one. So x plus negative two, or x minus two equals zero, so x must be. Two at two both sides. Two. two negative two. That you need to tell whoever's reading your work what the solution to the system is, and the solution is the x and y that works in both equations. Yeah. One more like that, and then a new kind. Is that the one I was talking about? No, no that's no. <laughs> not tomorrow, but what, Monday? Yeah. Monday. Yeah. Um, <coughs> what are we doing on Wednesday? <coughs> Being in a different class? What do you mean? We're watching a movie. I mean, um, oh, no, I do have you on Wednesday. Yeah, you were. Oh, that's right. No, it's me, though. I'm going to learn Alec Remark. Oh, oh, sounding so disappointed when you said that. That's nice, I like that. Oh, <laughs> I did. I do have a little bit. Said X minus E. Okay. Thursday, apparently. Can they? It's on Friday. Your fingers out there. <laughs> itchy. Yeah, it's itchy. It's itchy. It's itchy. It's itchy. It's itchy. It's Tell me what time it is. I'll do it. Throw a pen at her when she gets Yeah. Um, Ready with your race. Jump. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't do it unless you like the honor has or anything else. What? Right.
compare the y by replacing it with something that is excellent. Because it's set up so nicely, the next one will not be set up nicely. It's set up nicely in saying that y is the next minus a. First thing I would do, I would just uh, I would hit undo on the circuit. Oh, jeez. Undo is actually done. Oh. Okay. So here's what the, the nice equation is telling us. Yeah. Y is 10x minus 8. So this y could be replaced completely by 10x minus 8. So I could just start writing this equation again right here. And instead of writing y this time, since y is the same as 10x plus, or it's 10x minus 8. Oh, there's a 3 there, though. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And where we see 3 times y in this equation is 3 times, well, still y, but it's, it's equivalent to 10x minus 8. And would you put plus 51? Equals 51. Equals, that's what this equation says. Yes. Equals <laughs> Okay. Go ahead and distribute the three. Good. Now you're like, believe them, believe them, I'm the one who take care of it. You need some kind of temporal displacement disorder. Believe people are talking to you before they talk to you. They're talking because you talk to them. Okay. X is 3, check it out. Okay, well now, we have half the solution. Merry Christmas to me. Yeah, he's saying. He's saying this hustle. Okay, now I, I told I told Shelby she has half the equation, but, or half the solution. What do I mean by that? Oh, because I didn't plug it in. Right, you got to figure out what y is. You have half of it. You have x is 3, but what's y? Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> y is equal to 10 times 3 minus 80. And 8. 8. Y equals 30 minus 8. So y is 22. 3 times Now here's a new problem. It's barely a problem, but I should tell you that it's going to happen. Wait. What? Can we have another one of those ones before we do that? Oh my god. Yeah, you'll deal with this fine. Break that one. Pizza. You have a long old do your homework break. Pizza. 9x minus y equals 3. Now why is this not looking so nice? Because you have to change at least one of them mm -hmm. to self-intercept. If you change one of them to self-intercept, then it fits. Then, it, then it's saying y equals, right? And then you can replace. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be self-intercept form. We can solve this one. We can solve this one for y or x. We can solve this one for y or x. Just choose one of the equations, solve for either of the variables that's the easiest to solve for, easiest to get by itself, and then you can move forward. Which of these equations would be easiest to solve for one of the variables? I think it would be the y of x. <coughs> you think it would be easier to get x by itself here? Yeah, because I know that 9 doesn't go into 3. But it'll have a fraction. But it's okay, because that makes one of it easier. Well, what I would do. See the second equation? You're all looking at the second equation right now, right? Mm -hmm. You see that y? Oh, you yeah. see how y does not have anything but a negative 1 in front of it? No. Yeah. So I know that if I'm going to solve for y, I don't have to worry about dividing by what's in front of y and having it go into everything nicely. It's just 
Like, if I get that y on one side by itself, even if I have to divide by a negative 1 to get it by itself, it's well, going to be easier than anything else. So I subtract 9x from both sides in this equation. I have a question. Negative y no. equals 33 minus 9x. Question y. So my question, okay, why can't you just <laughs> done it with the x? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. You can. It's just in the end of that, it's going to come out with, like, you're going to have denominators of 5 that you're going to have to deal with. But this, I know, is just going to be a nice, so a y equals no fractions. What's that? Yeah, just move one x over there, and then I got to divide by negative 1, right, so that I have a positive y. So y equals negative 33 plus 9x if I divide both sides by a negative 1. I think, is, I think that's our best option if we want to solve for y or solve for x in one of these equations. So I, I could use this equation now instead of this one. I want to erase it, but I'll just kind of mark it out. Like you don't really care about that stuff anymore. We rewrote this equation so it looks like y equals, which is nice because we wanted, to, we wanted one of the equations to tell us that y equals this thing that you're going to substitute in for y, or x equals this thing you're going to substitute in for x. I got it. We got y is negative 33 plus 9x. So I'm going to write this other equation four. here. Yeah, 5x plus 4 rotations. Four times nine, that's thirty-six. Times x. Four. Thirty-six x plus five x is thirty-nine x. No, it's not. It's forty-one x. Thirty-one x minus one thirty-two equals four. Add one thirty-two. Forty-one x equals one hundred and thirty-six. Divide by forty-one. That's 32. That's 32. That's 32. That's right. Things aren't working out. Just change the numbers. I got it. So 32 plus 132 is 164. Divide by 41. Mm -hmm. So the thing was. I wrote down the first equation incorrectly. I wrote it equals 4, should it equal 32. So I just changed that and yeah, everything's fine now. Now we gotta get y. Now we gotta get y, you're right. Very good. I didn't have that written down yet. No. Wait. How did 4 become 32? Yeah, I had written it down in the wrong, incorrectly. Like I copied it down wrong. I wrote 4 and I should have written 32. But I didn't do any math to get 32. I just had written it down wrong to begin with. This should be 32. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just me all up, man. So x is 4, and now we need to find y, but we know y is equal to negative 33 plus 9x, so y <laughs> equals negative 33 plus 36, because 9 times 4 is 36, and y equals 3. Yeah, I failed. The solution I missed. So there is a lot to keep track of. There's lots of negatives and positives that can get mixed up. So inside, I made a mistake. I'm not 
immunity mistakes. So just be careful. If you see, if you got some weird decimal, it doesn't mean you're wrong. Maybe the answer is a weird decimal, but just check and make sure you count it down right. Make sure you when you distribute it, and maybe there's a negative involved that you made a mistake there with the negatives. See what we're doing there? See what substitution's made up? Uh, we get one of them to say, one of the equations to say y is this, or x is this, and we substitute that into the other equation for x or y, which I put there. Oh, yeah. That's one. I'm using this. Solve for one of the variables, then we can figure out the other variable. Okay. Uh, Randy, Jenna. Phones and phones here. Yay. Okay.